Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kira Show here. Now then, when we last left off, <sighs> Deku and everyone else, they had just faced a weird, weird challenge. They had just, well, they were spending their summer break in space to actually get more training in, if not properly go on hunts. Because they have somewhat noticed that their skills may be getting rusty. And even though they do train every day, they do hunt their own food. And, well, things are a bit different. They still do notice that, without being on the hunt out in space, their skills are not as fine as they used to be. So, they would have headed back out. Now... In saying that, let us continue where we last left off. After finding the unlikely ally, Deku basically learned that the Bad Bloods were doing human testing, if not experimenting and editing people's quirks. Shinsho being proof of that. But, well, the planet they were on is a bit different. Deku would have gotten the information from Shinsho and they would have came along. But the engineer would have begrudgingly just, well, wave Shinsho off as he would stay there and live in the cave. He would just be getting things set up for them, if not making a home, while the humans are gone. Now then, with that being said, Shinsho would have just said that they can trust him, but even then Deku still is not very sure, as their course is heading for the planet. They should arrive there within two days. But, even then, they do need to get some proper training in. They would try getting Shinsho to work out and do everything, but... Aside from the fact that he spent most of his life as a farmer... He is somewhat, well, muscular. It's just that he's... Not muscular. He's like... Hmm. He's like... What's the best way to even describe it? I would say Karashima, whenever he did not have very good control over his hardening. Because that's the only good picture I can see Shinsho being at. Not a lot of muscle, but not too much. Now then. With that being said, they would have tried training him and actually getting him used to using combat, but... Whenever Shinsho was told to use a weapon, he would have just, well, put his hands up, sh like, showing no. But Deku would have just taken both, the, sp well, both the, the sharpened blades off of his weapon, handing over his bow staff, showing him that this is not going to do anything. Trying to train him and actually get him to use this. But Shinsho would just be begrudgingly moving around with it. Now then. They would eventually arrive on the planet. As Shinsho would be looking around. Things are somewhat like he remembers. But he's still trying to figure this all out. <sighs> no. <sighs> Deku. He begins to tell his ship to scan for any like any heat signatures or Essentially, any organic life on the planet, aside from the native inhabitants. Which the ship reads, no native inhabitants. So, all alien life, if not all life on the planet, will be foreign. Now, with that being said, this is when Deku. He's flying around, if not having, with a ship, trying to search for anything that he can find. Eventually coming across what looks to be a rundown game reserve. Now, when I say rundown, this area is completely fenced in, but in everywhere on the inside, there's 
Well, a building. Unkept and very desolate. Along with the fact that there's a ship that may have been destroyed. It shows shines of burn marks and freezer mark. Well, freezing. If not being rapidly cooled. Now, with that, they're just looking at this mark. It covers an entire 90 degree angle, if not 180 degrees in front of them. Which is insane. Along with that, there's looks to be bodies on the ground. They're not really sure how to process that, as they do walk in. They find a lot of broken tubes, if not what looks to be, well, rooms, if not testing facilities for different things. They find what looks to be a human spinal column, as not only is it somewhat messed up and, well, taken, clearly from out of a body, it also shows signs that they're extracting a certain fluid, if not trying to put it into other predators. They would have found a restricted video, which Deku would have been able to somewhat try and mess with, but May and uh, May and Momo, they would have actually worked together to hack through it. Momo using the console, and May actually trying to plug in some tech. This was a bit tricky, however, as it did take them a couple minutes. Through watching the video, they watched as they show a certain test subject, someone with this quirk. Their quirk, for the sake of it, let's say it was a stretchy quirk. Now, it would cut to the feed of the Yaucha with getting with the fluid. He's laying down at the table as the doctor would inject it directly into his neck and push down the plunger, sending it throughout his body. As the Yaucha very heavily mutates and rapidly begins to stretch around the around the lab, so effectively killing him by wearing him too thin, you could say. Now, with that being said. This is somewhat horrifying, as this just shows that the Bad Bloods, if they, if they didn't think their quirks were useful to be trained under, they would edit you and see what they can do with your quirks if you couldn't even use them. So, Deku, he begins to try busting his way through the facility. And what I mean by that is, if he finds a closed door, he just rips through it and kicks open what he can, going through restricted after restricted access. They would eventually find a mass room of broken tubes, along with just something in the center. This is weird, as they would see a human, if not a person inside of the tube. Everywhere around is melted and what looks to be charred. As they would walk up to the tube seeing a girl. This is very confusing as they would watch as she's just floating in the water, if not the liquid. Deku would walk over to the monitor as he does check on what's going on with this one. Quirk. Odd, if not uncharacteristic for a human. Requires weapons to use. Interesting. Adaptability to situations. Unknown. Now, Deku, he would eventually just initiate a... Well, he would just eject her from the tube as she would just... The liquid would drain out and she would fall to the ground. Coughing and she's actually exhausted, as she does take a deep breath, basically coming back from consciousness. She would look around, seeing everyone in these outfits, if not seeing that there are a bunch of strange people. She would have immediately just turned and started bolting, as that just happened. Now, 
whatever she did, they actually did one thing. She is just taking off running as you see her try and grab a weapon, if not just grab something sharp from the ground. And she's taken off. Everyone's a bit confused as Deku would immediately give chase, going straight after her. After this happened, Deku would have chased her up to the surface as she is just trying to get on the ship. If not, she would jump in and try mashing a bunch of different buttons on the broken console, finding that it's not working. Deku would have appeared behind her as he would have just grabbed one of her hands and she would immediately just come behind, well, turn around, stabbing Deku in the side. If not, just stabbing into his armor. Now, this would have broken through his armor and actually draw a little bit of blood, as Deku would just bring his hand down, pulling it out of his side. Now, she's just looking at Deku as he would just hand this back over, essentially saying not to do that again. In fact, showing that that was not even effective. She's just staring down at the blood as she would actually just bring it up to her mouth, licking it. As she would somewhat turn clay-like and mimic Deku. As she immediately turns, bolting out of the ship once again. Deku's confused as he gives chase once again. Well, as he gives chase. People are watching as there are two Midorias. Deku would tackle her to the ground and she would immediately turn around, slashing him across the face. With claws. This is in somewhat shocking Deku, as he's not even sure what she's doing anymore. Eventually, she would have, well, been restrained. If not, these two are just standing there. They're kind of confused as to why there's two of them, until her cork wears off. And she returns to being a blonde-haired girl. Now, Deku would just look to her as he tells her exactly what was that. She just stares at Deku as she would try saying something, but she can't. Somewhat trying to, well, speak in Yauja, if not broken Yauja. Deku would have just switched over to that language, if not put a mask on her, trying to read her brainwaves. Eventually, he would have been able to get something out of her from a mix of broken Yauja and English. Asking what caused those marks on the ground, if it wasn't her. She would just say that it was the other one. Other what? Other human. You're kidding me. Well, where is he now? Um, not sure. Last saw... <sighs> uh, she would have turned around... Showing the 180 degree scorch mark on the ground, her just spreading her hands outward. This is interesting to Deku, as this human actually does have, well, power. If not, he's able to at least take out Yauja with their cork alone, which only he and Bakugo seem to have done before. Ugh. With that being said, Deku would just board her onto the ship as they would get her food, actually scaling the planet even further. They don't find anything as Deku tries to look through different files he's taken from the computers. Plugging his mask in, he's going through them as he does find exactly what he believes to be the human responsible for this. They have a quirk. Uh, it involves two elements. Heat and cold. So you can call them a half and half quirk. Now, Deku, he's actually interested in this, as he does tell the computer to search for certain climates that this boy would be able to survive in. The computer just has an error with it. His body chemistry would be different. Along with the fact that being edited so much, if not being edited at all, he might be, well, his quirks might be different now. 
but Deku has a sneaking suspicion. They've only seen the heat, so where's the cold? As Deku tells the computer to head for the nearest pole, it would immediately start heading toward its, the planet's south pole, as it would arrive there in under two hours, if not three hours. Now, Deku, as soon as they all land and actually get there, they would find that this entire climate used to be a jungle, if not a forest, so this is artificial. Now, as they're walking around, they would have eventually find, if not see, what looks to be a man-made structure. Except it's made out of ice. As soon as Deku is walking up to, to it, this is whenever he would immediately just hear something, something moving on the ground as he would turn to, well, basically just dodge to the right, Avoiding a spike of ice. As someone would walk forward. This someone would be wearing a predator mask as they are just skinning the environment. As they also do have a pair of wrist, well, wrist bracers on their left arm. Now, Deku is looking at this person. As he would just break his hands up, stepping forward and immediately getting his foot encased. His body was ad already adapting by increasing its internal body temperature, but it would just begin to do it more. As he would quickly melt through the ice, walking toward Todoroki. He would just bring his hands up, showing that he's not here to hurt him, as he would actually bring them to his mask. Todoroki quickly switching over to his fire, as he immediately blasted towards him with both hands. Now... As soon as that happens, he switches back over to his ice as he tries to cover the entire layer in front of him, encasing Deku. Deku would have dodged it and actually move out of the way, as he would eventually get straight toward Todoroki, slashing, well, not slashing at him, but basically tossing him, actually throwing him at the ground as he would have taken off his own mask, revealing that he's human. He would have just tried saying that they can get out of here, if not, he can leave now. They're not with the bad bloods. Todoroki only remembering that word. Bad bloods. He would somewhat be looking at Deku as he would reluctantly grab at his hand, if not take it. Now, for the sake of this, let us cut back to about eight years ago. Todoroki is four years old. And his father, he is increasingly worried. Not believing that he can even surpass All Might, he would have begun Todoroki's training the day he awakened his quirk. Now, this training is a bit more intense as it actually does involve, well, a lot more abuse. Eventually, Todoroki is somewhat taken to this training and actually while well working with it as he would have been seen more like Endeavor early on. Yaoja are watching this as they are disgusted by what this man is doing. He is doing this to his own child, and if not, he's even disowned one of his others. Which is highly dishonorable, even among them. They would have eventually seen as Ray would have given to rookie a scar, but as soon as that happened that day, that was it. The Yaoja would have moved in. The Yaoja, they would have knocked on Endeavor's door, as Endeavor would open it. Not sure who they are, until one of them... They bring down one simple thing into Endeavor's kneecap. This weapon, an Owen Mace, or an Oni Mace. Swinging it down, breaking both of his kneecaps. Walking in and taking Todoroki. Which... Come on. Two aliens abducting your son after you give him a burn scar? No one is going to believe you. She would be put in a mental institution. Very early on. Now. With that being said. Endeavor lost his kneecap privileges. As that would be Todoroki's backstory. Togo however was different. 
She was seen as an infiltrator, if not a powerful ally. Her quirk being just that simple makes it effective. Now, they would have gotten this after about a couple of days, if not heading back to Earth. Toga being, well, Toga explaining that her quirk basically makes her a good stealth operative. In fact, she's impersonated a Yaja before. But it comes with a weird boost of strength. It's kind of weird. As they're not sure what she means. She would have just explained that the Yaja only ever let her out to impersonate people. Because she was so bleh, because she was so good at it. In fact, it somewhat put them off whenever she was impersonating someone and they were a, of a good status. Once impersonating the clan leader. For a full two days. Which set the Yaja off to quarantine her. Now then. With that being said, they are heading back to Earth as they now have two new allies. And before anyone just thinks that I'm bringing Toga in to, well, make her a hero or do that, in the Predator universe, there is this whole thing where if you use Predator blood, you can in fact increase your strength, speed, durability, and uh, above all other things. Along with the fact that it has life extending properties, and it basically would help me boost the rest of the crew to catch up from to well, Todoroki, Bakugo, and Deku. But the rest of the crew, they were already good com well, combat wise. So this at least helps fill in the gaps. Now then, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video and. Have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.